epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. Hey everyone, it's Peter from Theme Park Crazy, and I have been just obsessed with dark rides lately. Especially weird dark rides. A few weeks ago, I did a video on the top 20 strangest dark rides ever. But as it turns out, there are even more weird dark rides that I've never heard of until very recently. A lot of these I wouldn't have found out about if it wasn't for YouTuber Colin Looks Back with his video Grab Bag Weird Defunct Dark Rides. I will link that video in the description by the way. Now for this video, I want to talk about 5 dark rides that I think really stand out and chances are a good 95-99% of my audience has never heard of them with the exception of a few diehards who have really done their dark ride homework. So I'm going to go through each of these rides and talk about what makes them so strange, what really makes them stand out and makes them more memorable. So first things first, we have a ride called Tren del Terror at Museo de Serra in Madrid, Spain. Now the Museo de Serra is actually a wax museum. Think of something like Madame Tussauds. So it's pretty much somewhere with a bunch of wax sculptures of famous figures. But this one stands out because it has a dark ride. Starting off, you go through what looks like a sewer tunnel with a bunch of rats. You can see rats eating a, eating a person's flesh. And then at the end of the tunnel, there's this giant mutant rat that kind of lunges towards you. And it sounds like a barking dog for some reason. <laughs> Then after you exit the sewer, you enter a prehistoric area with a triceratops on your right. And then on your left, you'll see a shark pop out. Unfortunately, the shark isn't submerged, so I can't include it in a submechanophobia video, but the perspective is kind of confusing because behind it, you see this beautiful picturesque sunset on a beach, but the ocean is behind the shark. So is the shark coming out of the sand or is there like a tide pool or a cave or something? I'm not sure. But there's no time to think about that because immediately on your right, you'll see a Tyrannosaurus head kind of sticking out of the ground. And I will say the sculpting is very good on this one. I don't know who designed this head. I know a lot of my viewers can automatically tell where an animatronic or a prop is made. So if you know which company made this, feel free to comment down below. After this, what I assume to be prehistoric section, you enter a sci-fi area where you can see a xenomorph, a face hugger attached to a guy's face, a head crab from John Carpenter's The Thing, and I think that's supposed to be a sandworm from Dune, but I'm not sure. What I find really humorous is that there's a gruesome animatronic of John Hurt's character from Alien with the little baby alien sticking out of his stomach, and the xenomorph is just standing right next to him as if admiring the work he did. After this, you'll go through a tunnel with black light paint and glowing planets, and suddenly you're in a Star Wars scene. You've got BB-8, you've got R2-D2, and you've got, for better or for worse, Jar Jar Binks. So there's something from every trilogy here. One odd thing I noticed though is that it's clearly the Moss Eisley spaceport. It's the cantina where the band is playing and you do see the band there. But the sign right next to it says Stars Cafe, which I don't remember if that was an actual restaurant from the Star Wars movies, I doubt it. But if they couldn't use the name Moss Eisley, that's kind of odd because they could clearly use all of the characters and they have the actual Star Wars theme playing as you go through this area. But just when you're getting used to all of the Star Wars characters and the atmosphere, suddenly there's a giant headed Pennywise on your right. And what's really funny is that as you pass him, you could still hear the theme from the Moss Eisley Cantina. And I just find that hilarious for some reason. After Pennywise, you go downhill and there's no gravity involved, so no, this isn't a coaster. And suddenly you're in a jungle which resembles something out of the Predator movies and you can clearly see the Predator there. But that's not Arnold Schwarzenegger, that is absolutely Sylvester Stallone as Rambo. Now I don't know about you, but I would give my entire life savings to see a Rambo vs Predator movie. Well, maybe not literally, but I'd still love to see it. After this, your vehicle is actually reversed on the track and you go backwards through the jungle, through the Pennywise scene, and through the Star Wars scene before heading to the boarding station. So there's a switch track involved. Now overall, this ride is just a bunch of random movie references strung together in a dark ride format. And it definitely could have benefited from being longer. 
but there are some pretty cool figures on it, and the fact that it's a dark ride inside of a wax museum makes it a very memorable experience that I'd love to check out one day. Next up is a dark ride called Luma Illusion, and this ride actually operated at the State Fair of Texas. Now I have been to the State Fair of Texas before, and it is amazing, but this ride is no longer part of the fair. So from what I've looked up about this ride, it first opened in the 1970s, with the exterior being designed by dark ride legend Bill Tracy. And here's a quick fun fact, the wizard that was part of the exterior was actually a retrofitted Rolf de Wolf animatronic from Showbiz Pizza's Rock of Fire Explosion. And apparently there were other retrofitted Rock of Fire Explosion animatronics, but I couldn't find any good usable photos of the retrofits. Moving on, all you need to know about this ride is that it was pretty much a Pink Floyd dark ride. Yes, you heard that right, a Pink Floyd dark ride. They actually played Pink Floyd music throughout the ride experience. And instead of being like a haunted ride like you would expect from one of these pretzel style dark rides, it was more like the inside of a kaleidoscope with really trippy visuals and mirrors and colors. Think of Knights in White Satin from Hard Rock Park, but on a budget. It was eventually turned into a haunted house style dark ride, but a lot of people actually prefer the original. I mean, it's not every day that you see a dark ride that's just dedicated to being strange and trippy instead of scary. So it's really no wonder why locals remember this so fondly. So now we're at the midpoint of this video, and before I get to two really strange dark rides, I want to take some time and go over something wholesome, but still pretty unusual. You may have heard about the cancelled Muppets ride at Disney World, but did you know that there was actually a Muppets dark ride created? Sort of. Around 1989, car company Chrysler actually sponsored a ride featuring the Muppets promoting traffic safety, and it was called the Muppets Traffic Safety Show. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, a Muppets dark ride? How have I never heard of it before? What park was it at? Well, it actually wasn't at a park at all. In fact, it was a pop-up attraction. This ride actually traveled across the country and opened inside of shopping malls. And what's really interesting about this ride is that the layout wasn't the same at every mall. Apparently, depending on how much space they had, they could add or remove scenes or even switch up the layout a bit. It was pretty much a giant Fisher Price toy that was plopped inside of a mall. On this ride, children boarded six-person vans and made their way down the roadways past several scenes featuring the Muppets, emphasizing a different element of traffic safety. In one scene, you had Miss Piggy singing a song about looking both ways before crossing the street, and then in another, you had Kermit's nephew Robin in a van with his Frog Scout troop singing about seatbelts. Then you had Fozzie trying to tell a why did the chicken cross the road joke when Gonzo interrupts, saying that the chicken is doing the right thing by being patient and waiting for the walk signal. And Colin looks back, pointed this out, but this is pretty hypocritical considering how in The Great Muppet Caper, Gonzo literally flung himself in front of a taxi in order to hail a cab. And of course, you can't have the Muppets without Kermit, who does appear on this ride. So far, there's only one video of this ride that's available out there, but there are apparently other scenes like involving Beaker and Bunsen and Animal. But again, the layout varied depending on what mall it was installed in, so... There's a lot that's still unknown about this ride, which is shocking because it's the Muppets. I'd be totally down for watching a Defunct Land video on this ride, absolutely. But now that we've taken a wholesome break about traffic safety and looking both ways before crossing the street, here comes a fresh dose of insanity. First, I want to talk about a ride at Austria's Wiener Prater called Mecki Express. Well, you might hear the name of that ride and think, well, it's just going to be a knockoff of Mickey Mouse. But no, apparently Mecki was a very famous German character in the 1950s. This character was a hedgehog long before the days of Sonic. I wasn't able to find a lot of information on this character, but I found a lot of collectible dolls. So I'm guessing the dolls were a big thing, kind of like Cabbage Patch Kids, but that's just a guess. And what's weird is that on this ride, they have the actual dolls hooked up to machinery to act as animatronics. And clearly these figures are showing their age because they're pretty creepy to look at. They just kind of move around and vibrate. And I definitely wouldn't want to be with them in a dark room. 
Now on the ride, you'll see them a few times. You see one just hanging around on a moon. You see a few of them reenacting a train robbery in a scene that didn't exactly age well. But then you have a few unrelated scenes. First off, you have several dioramas of what are really impressive miniatures, I will admit. There's this one that recreates an airport. There's another one that recreates Ben-Hur. But these aren't the weirdest parts of the ride. Towards the beginning, you'll see this random moving puppet of a clown that appears to be dancing in front of an audience. And then you'll see this. Now there is a sign above it that says Mickey Mouse at the Dentist built in 1930. And I tried to do some research, but I couldn't find any short about Mickey Mouse going to the dentist. I did find a French comic book cover of Mickey at the Dentist, but it looks nothing like this monstrosity. And there was a Disney short called Mickey's Toothache planned, but that never ended up getting made. But in any regard, what the f*** is going on here? Why is there a wolf in a suit and tie? Why is Mickey holding what looks like a bloody tooth in his hand? Why do Mickey's face and mouth look so terrifying? And why is Donald dressed like a nurse? Why does he have an orange pill bottle in one hand and a syringe in the other? Is that supposed to be Novocaine? Honestly, I have no idea what's going on here, and even in the video that I'm showing here, you can actually hear the person filming it say, What is happening there? So yeah, I don't know what's going on, he doesn't know what's going on, please let me know in the comments if you do. Putting that nightmare fuel aside, we're gonna get to a ride that is definitely the strangest, but is also the most awesome. And this ride is Zombie Paradise at Tokyo Dome City. Now this one was made by Sally Dark Rides, and it's up there with The Mine of Lost Souls and Knights in White Satin as some of their most creative work. And it's also thanks to Sally that we have some very good videos and photos available of it. So this ride takes place in a haunted hotel inside of a castle. So it's pretty much Hotel Transylvania before Hotel Transylvania. Now according to Sally Dark Rides website, everyone is just dying to serve you. And what do they mean by that? Well, shortly after the check-in desk, you'll come across a torture chamber. Now there were a few methods of torture shown here and they were pretty gruesome. You've got a guy being hung upside down, a guy being stretched, and two skeletons on a spike wall. As it turns out, this chamber is followed by a kitchen scene. And here you can see a bunch of ghoulish chefs just chopping people up and cooking people in the oven. And again, it's a pretty gruesome sight. For some reason, the guy being cooked in the oven is holding a sign that says rare. I assume that's the temperature they're trying to cook him to. By now, you might be wondering what exactly makes this ride as awesome as I said it was. Well, I'm referring to one scene on this ride that really has you wondering what kind of brownies they were eating. Welcome to the discotheque. Here, a zombie band named The Deadbeats plays an original song called Zombie Paradise. And no, it has nothing to do with Coolio, but rather it is an original rock song meant exclusively for this ride. But that's not all. There's also a three-headed, three-breasted woman who appears to be a combination of Cher, Marilyn Monroe, and Madonna. And right next to her you have this breakdancing zombie. This scene just comes absolutely out of nowhere and yet it's pretty epic if I have to say so myself. It kind of reminds me of the Mine of Lost Souls, where one minute you're in the New Hampshire mine and the next you're in Ancient Egypt. It really has that same vibe to it. Of course, there are other scenes on this ride and many other animatronics and set pieces, but this discotheque scene is the reason I had to include it here. Honestly, I'm shocked that more people haven't heard about this ride. And you really have to give Sally a lot of credit for documenting it for us. One of these days, I'd honestly love to sit down with some of the officials of Sally Dark Rides and talk about their past projects because I'm sure there's even more that I've never even heard of. And with that said, there you have five Dark Rides that I honestly think deserve a lot more attention just for how strange they are. Hopefully in the future I'll get to do another video about strange Dark Rides if I can find 15 more of them. Feel free to suggest some in the comments. And before I wrap things up, I want to give a special shout out to my newest $5 Patreon member, BulletBill25. Thank you so much, and if you want to support me on Patreon, feel free to head to the link in the description. But with that said, this is Peter from Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all soon. Zombie zone, spirits roam and
search for home Zombies of the night Not alive, not quite dead Somewhere in between instead Zombie paradise Stay, stay, stay Stay, stay with us and join the fun Dancing with 